to be too high for somebody that is superficial, materialistic, um, love this world and the things of this world and is stuck on the pride of life and the lust of the flesh. They're not going to uh, accept that. They're not going to understand that nor embrace it. They don't have the ability um, or they don't want to exercise the capability to exalt their level of thinking to kingdom of God level because kingdom of God level is supernatural spiritual thinking. It's a supernatural spiritual level. That means it's another place in existence that is even more real than where we are right now. But it's better things there. It's, and you don't have to die to go there either. Um, Jesus said, if you believe and trust in him, he said, you will, he said, you will never die. Something like that. Uh, he said, believest thou this? You understand what I'm saying? And um, I know a lot of times it's very difficult for a lot of people to believe the things that Jesus say because, you know, when bad things happen, the, you know, people get angry with God. And I feel like that's a natural, um, natural response because, um, well, because people are hurt and because uh, people don't understand why a God as good as he is will allow evil. But one thing, like I stated before, you have to realize evil has to run its course. Adam set evil on a course. Actually, Lucifer did. But Adam set it on a course as it pertains to our existence on this planet, as it pertains to the human race. Adam set evil on a course. Evil is on a course, and it's going to run it to the finish line. So that's the reason why um, even though death hits people's physical bodies, if you believe in Jesus Christ, death will pass you by. Just like it did um, in the days of Moses when they uh, marked the doorposts with the blood. And uh, when death saw the blood, it had to pass over. And, and it's no different than the blood of Jesus. Well, the blood of Jesus is uh, above that, but it's just symbolic of the blood of Jesus. When the devil sees, when death sees the blood of Jesus over your life, it has to pass you by. That doesn't mean that believers won't die. It doesn't mean that children won't die in the flesh. But the spirit is spared. Now, in Moses' day, the flesh was spared because they were still alive. But... What I'm saying is as it pertains to Jesus Christ, the spirit is spared. All little children go to heaven. And it, it's just like walking out of one room into another, I believe. I, I, you know, I know that even though people sometimes die tragically, what can hurt a spirit? A spirit is a spirit. Only the body. And then a lot of people feel like, well... You know, they believe the person suffered, but God is omnipresent. So that means he's at places when we all can't be there. And I say we all because, you know, we've all had people that we love who have passed away, I would think. You know, maybe some people have not, but had people that they love to pass away. But they're lucky if they haven't. But if, they, if you've ever gone through that and experienced that, you have to keep in mind, well, Jesus is there. Jesus is the doctor in the sick room. You know what I mean? Jesus is everywhere. Um, and I just feel like that this world has fed us a bit of a, uh, a lot of illusion. Meaning, um, I just don't, I feel like there's more to this existence. I know there is. than meets the eye. Um, to me, this planet, this world, this existence is the abyss of illusion. And by that I mean, it's just like a dark pit full of things that aren't real, um, full of experiences that they are real for the moment, but are they really real? You know what I mean? Like, okay, first let me define abyss. An abyss is a deep or seemingly bottomless chasm. And that's basically a pit, a hole, a cavity, or some sort of a canyon, a, a fissure, which is um, basically... Um, Defined as a long, narrow crack opening along the surface of the earth, but as it pertains to this, the spiritual realm or pertain to this planet, it, it's like this world is like a deep, dark, evil, sad, depressing, oppressed pit that just seems to suck you up. And it just seems like there's n not too much good going on in the world today. But I just want you to know that um, I believe a lot, a lot of this is just illusion. I just believe it's an illusion. And basically, an illusion is a thing that is likely to be wrongly perceived or interpreted by the senses as it pertains to this world and, and other, um, other um, things that pertain to our lives. Illusions, even as it pertains to relationships. A lot of people have married 
um, off of illusion, dated off of illusions, fell in love off of illusions, stayed in toxic relationships off of illusions, meaning things that um, were wrongly perceived. You perceive that that person was that way and they were not. You perceive that that marriage was, was that way and it was not or was going to be that way and it was not. You perceive the relationship was going to be this, that, and the third with that person and it was not. And I know I've kind of gone a little left field, but I'm just trying to give you some in-depth understanding as to illusion means not real. It's only your perception of it. And that's why a lot of people, they find themselves caught in toxic situations. They find themselves being caught up in the evening news. They find themselves being caught up on the things they see on the internet that will cast them into a state of depression. But when you come into the realization that, or the understanding that all of that could be just an illusion, although it is reality, but God is in control of all of it. I believe that we are all in a controlled environment. I just don't believe that everything, I know we are. I know we're in a controlled environment because God is not going to allow anything to exalt authority over him. Why would he? He is God. There is no higher authority. Um... Basically, an illusion is a deceptive appearance or impression. Deceptive. See, that's the reason why Jesus doesn't have to um, go all out like that when things happen on this earth. When tragedies happen, when things in our lives don't go the way that we want it to go. You, you ever wonder why God is so relaxed? Why he seems to take his time? Why he doesn't move till he gets ready? Well, you know how the, the, there's a saying that um, he may not come when you want him to come, but when he comes, he's always on time or something like that. Because when you are in control of everything and everybody in existence, you don't have to react the way that your creations expect you to react. Because you know what? You, you can say to yourself, I got this. No matter what you may think, no matter what the illusion, no matter what you may perceive, no matter what you may try to draw out of your own intellect, I've got this. As it pertains to little children and the things that may happen to them, Father can pretty much tell you, I've got this. They're in my home. They're with me. They are okay. Satan has no rule, rest, nor authority over them because Satan has no rest anyway. He's a tormented demon. And although Adam did bring death into this world, it should show you all the depth of hatred that Satan has for you. Because Satan deliberately targeted Eve and, and um, deliberately targeted Adam and Eve, to be honest. So that should show you the level of hate that he has for all of us. Even though we blame God for this, that, and the third, if you take God out of the picture, you ain't got nobody. You have no advocate. You have no no defense, you have nobody, you, you don't have a big brother, so to speak, as it pertains to Jesus Christ, you don't have anybody, no disrespect in that title, but a lot of people see him as playing the role of big brother to the bully who is Satan, and pretty much symbolically, he is your big brother, in a, and symbolically speaking, to the bully, Satan, who wants to bully you throughout life, bully you with depression, and bully you with uh, failure, and bully you with, you know, losses, and death, and all of that, but Jesus steps on the scene and says, if you believe in me, you'll have eternal life. Jesus steps on the scene and said, if you, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you know, you can speak to the mountain, you know. Jesus always counteracts the attacks of the devil, even as it pertains to death. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Jesus has got it. G Every little child in this world is loved by Jesus. And we are too. So God is basically saying, amidst all the confusion and chaos in this world, it is of an urgency that you all know, I've got this. I've got this. No matter what you may think, no matter the level of intellect you may be exercising, because, well, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. But what Father wants you to know as it pertains to this day and the rest of the, uh, and the, rest of the longevity of your lives is that, He's got this, okay? So with that said, God bless you all until next time.